Last Week Tonight's use of social media is by far the most interesting use I've seen by a satire up until this point. Um, I did an entire um, project on The Daily Show and how they do satirical tweets. I've also studied when the Colbert Report was on their use of satire um, in the Twitter sphere because Colbert had the issue in which it was cancel Colbert because he sent a tweet up in which he was in which worked in the long program for his show but in 140 characters people didn't understand the context and therefore um, didn't understand the satirical nature of the tweet and so with instances like that it's really interesting to see how Oliver has transcended the satirical genre so his Twitter account has jokes they tend to say brought to you by grapes you know or something I mean it's really interesting to see he has jokes which aren't even relevant to anything he's talking about sometimes. Um, and then he'll have his news program being advertised, but then he'll also have hashtags. And this is where it gets really, um, this is where he really differentiates himself. So he's been developing his own hashtags. So rather than just have hashtag the Daily Show, hashtag the Colbert Report, or something like that, he's actually making his own. So he has Go Get Those Geckos, in which he wanted to educate people that there were five geckos lost in space. He had Jeff We Can educate people about um, smoking and things like that. Um, he's creating his own hashtags for people to follow up on the issues he's spoken about on air. So rather than just have people um, tweet into the cybersphere and not necessarily have a direct link aside from hashtag the program's name, they can now have a very specific hashtag um, so that like-minded viewers can also tweet their thoughts and communicate with one another, expressing their ideas about that particular instance. So he's making it more specific, <laughs> which is very important. So the conversation is developed, which leads into his call to action. So if people are already communicating directly with one another or about the issue, it makes it really easy for them to follow up with website links and additional hashtags and things like that. So he's garnering this new interest in the issues he's talking about and making it easier for people to follow up with them. Not all of the hashtags uh, Last Week Tonight has created have actually been issue related. Some of them, I think, are ways to get people online to follow the hashtag and then do the next link and then the next link and just keep scrolling and reading. So I think it's just a marketing technique in a way and garner interest um, for viewers who might not necessarily want to follow through with like Jeff We Can, but if they, but if their favorite actor is Chris Hemsworth and all of a sudden there's a tweet that says half a Hemsworth, they might click on it and then click on that and then follow through to last week tonight. So he's garnering interest using celebrity names or sometimes just jokes in general. Um, he did half a Hemsworth talking about the two Hemsworth brothers. He did Keeping It Tight Tatum in reference to Channing Tatum and when he did that new Magic Mike movie. So he's getting people involved um, in the conversation. So if someone sees their favorite actor's name, they might click on that and then click on to last week's night and then keep clicking. So it's, it's interesting to have that take. But it's also humorous when you're watching the show <laughs> because he'll be in the middle of talking about something and then all of a sudden he'll say, this is just like half a Hemsworth. And he'll have the hashtag for people to use so it's for viewers as well. And so it kind of breaks up, not the monotony because his show is it's completely hysterical, it's not monotonous in any way, but it breaks up him just talking about an issue. It all of a sudden will have a humorous element back to the issue. So instead of just having this constant high with your emotions, he breaks it so that you're not constantly you know, getting upset with the current issue or you, you know, you get your own breaking point in a way. <laughs> it makes you laugh and so you're more inclined to keep watching as well. So the use of hashtags is brilliant as far as I'm concerned. I think he's done something unique and it should be applauded. So John Oliver and his team have come up with a lot of their own hashtags. Some of which include Go Get Those Geckos, uh, No Prank Pledge, Jeff We Can, Jeff We Steal Can, uh, Jeff Wee's can, uh, not my Christian, or at least they ha they um, latched onto that one. <laughs> um, rejected shark movie titles, um, real animals, fake paws, all these sorts of different things to just try and garner viewer interest. And so it's nice to see that they've um, they're utilizing the modern day platforms rather than just have a standard news program in which people just tend to view. Now people can view and participate online. Um, my personal favorite use of Oliver's um, hashtags and Twitter account information has been when he talked about corporations latching on to hashtags for their own personal benefit. 
So when, I think it was DiGiorno, it, it was DiGiorno Pizza, when DiGiorno t used the hashtag why I stayed, which has to do with domestic violence and abuse and awful situations that people go through, and they said, I stayed because I had pizza, he had pizza or something, um, that's really offensive. And it was really interesting to see Oliver pick up on that. Because, again, that kind of involves more of an investigative journalism appeal. So it's not just, let's just talk about this instance, let's talk about why it's wrong. Um, so Oliver and his team, they came up with their own hashtag. Um, we understand that as corporate entities, our presence in certain discussions is not always required. So you'll strive to limit our activities to just selling you shit. <laughs> so <laughs> they were really trying to make it apparent to corporations that just because a tweet you have a tweet idea and there's a hashtag trending, you should not utilize it as a marketing strategy. So it's interesting to see that they not only caught this, but they developed their own tweet. So that's taking it one step further. That's in reference to something I've said before and other you know, interviews and pieces I've done in which Oliver takes it one step further, which is something that other fake news programs haven't done, which is why I think he's a legitimate news program by creating a hashtag for companies to tweet and for people to like, saying, yes, we understand that you should not be using, you know, this porn company should not be using the 9-11 hashtag. It's inappropriate. It's just, it's, no, it's not in good taste. It's kind of crass at times. And so when there's a marketing strategy of let's just follow this hashtag because it's trending, uh, people will see it and they know that that's not right. And so it's kind of a nice touch in a way that Oliver covered this story.